Today, I want to talk about the perception of event success for dirt races and why things are never as bad or as good as you think they are. Plus, we'll dive into a wide open NARC championship. We've got weather updates on several events and more. Let's go. It's Wednesday, March 6th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. If you like what I do here, make sure to hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and like these videos on YouTube. You can also get these shows on any of the major podcast platforms. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen. You can also follow Dirt Tracker across social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Threads, wherever you are, we are as well. Big hat tip also to all of the channel members who support Dirt Tracker each month. It's pretty wild that some of you guys have already been members for 16 months. A recent additions to the channel member list include JCJC5959, Don Rieger, Squizza Small Engine Repair, Justin Z, and Dan Hodemaker. If you want to check that program out, click the join button on the YouTube channel or visit youtube.com slash dirt tracker slash join. I want to start today's show off with a discussion about success. In the last few weeks, we've had this kind of insane seesaw of sentiment about some of these early season dirt races, and mostly on the sprint car side. We've gone from big car counts not seen in decades at dirt car nationals and packed grandstands to the outlaws are going out of business because 19 sprint cars showed up to Volusia on a Monday night. And with high limit, 50 plus at East Bay, sold out reserve seating to then 26 cars at Golden Isles and a very light Thursday grandstand with people talking about Georgia being a sprint car mistake. The haters on both sides are looking for any reason to cling to why things are bad. It really just depends on where their perceived allegiances are. But there are some things to consider here. First, when you're running an event, yes, you want a full grandstand, a full pit area, and 11 billion people watching online. To be fair, though, that only happens a few times a year. The bulk of events the rest of the season are usually dealing with varying levels of all three. And that's what we've seen the last few weeks. Yes, the dirt racing community saw light ticket sales at Golden Isles on that Thursday, but that didn't stop people from watching online. Flow Racing's numbers for that Thursday were very strong, and that combined Saturday show with Lucas was the highest viewed high limit event ever. Yes, I've seen the numbers, and they came along with a full facility on that Saturday, and I know the facility was full because I was there. So things were probably not nearly as bad as some wanted you to believe, and there were reasons behind the light Thursday grandstand crowd, which we uh, covered on a daily show. And on Monday at Volusia with the World of Outlaws, I was told multiple times via comments that the Outlaws canceled Sunday because of the car count and not the rain. And I just wouldn't say that because I'm a WRG homer. Right, that makes a lot of sense. And obviously that's not true because if it were about the car count, they would have canceled Monday as well. You would have gotten the quote, facility is saturated, the weekend is canceled. It's not really hard to do that. But instead they race Monday with the same number of sprint cars that were signed in on Sunday. And you know what? It didn't matter how many cars were there. Those Volusia grandstands were filled. Even Donnie Schatz mentioned in his post-race interview how big the crowd was. It's clear that the weather, a Volusia track that's hard on engines, and racing elsewhere kept cars away. But if WRG makes money on that event placed inside Bike Week in Daytona, how do you walk away from it? I'd take some of the negative comments about car counts to make money at the ticket gates. Success here isn't necessarily going to be black and white. And to go a bit further on that Volusia car count, 19 versus 23 a year ago, if you add in the four full-time cars lost to high limit, there's 23. Add in Kevin Newton and Justin Peck, who had planned on racing but left because of the weather, and you're now beyond last year's car count. And then that's without Sam Haferteep, Zeb Wise, Brian Brown, Noah Gass, and Aaron Reitzel, who were all at this event a year ago, but either raced elsewhere or took the weekend off. Are, they, uh, are the Outlaws still going to be going out of business when they get 40 plus this weekend at Kennedale? My point with all of this is they're going to be varying metrics of success on these events. There is no magic bullet. And if you're rooting for either of the sprint car sides to fail, you're going to be disappointed. All right, moving on. The NARC sprint cars out west were supposed to begin their 2024 season this weekend at Hanford, but that event has been postponed. The weather doesn't look too bad, but photos shared to social media show that the track is still very wet after recent storms. NARC tweeted that the fairgrounds were, quote, a swamp. Uh, no makeup date was announced just yet, and the season opener now shifts to March 16th at the Silver Dollar Speedway in Chico. Even though they're postponed, I wanted to dive into NARC a bit today because they have shared a list of full-timers expected to be uh, with them for the season. This is going to be an interesting year for NARC in terms of the championship contenders. Dominic Selzy won the title in 2021 and 2022, and he was third in 2023. 
He plans on traveling a bit more in 2024, though, and will not return full-time to the series to chase that championship. You'll still see him at a lot of events, just not as a regular, so that's one contender out. And 2023 champion Corey Day has moved on to national touring competition as he is now a full-time high-limit driver this season in the Jason Myers owned 14. So not only are two of the top three in the final standings out, they also accounted for 12 of 22 wins a season ago. Day had nine and Selzy three. That means this championship will be wide open this year. Justin Sanders, I think now has to be the de facto title favorite in the Mitri 2X as at the moment, we don't expect to see him travel much outside the West Coast in 2024 like he did last year. Other contenders include Bud Kading, who was the championship in, or champion in 2017. Justin Cox is back in the Bates Hamilton 42X. You've got Chase Johnson, Dylan Bloomfield in the Vertulo 83, uh, Billy Aton, last year's Rookie of the Year, Nick Parker and Jarrett Soros. Uh, the rookie class is expected to include Dominic Gordon, Gage Garcia, Caden Steele, Michael Ng, and Joey Ancona. If you're a fan of Sprint Cars After Dark, this will be an intriguing battle to follow all season long and something to check out uh, on those late nights on Flow Racing. Uh, if you're looking forward to some USMTS Modifieds this weekend, unfortunately, you'll have to wait until April to see them again. The King of America at Humboldt Speedway in Kansas has been postponed because of poor weather. Uh, instead of this weekend, it will now run April 4th through the 6th. There is no other racing on the USMTS calendar between now and then, so that will be your next race. After that, it's a trip to Boot Hill Speedway in Louisiana for three days. That's April 11th through the 13th. With four races complete in 2024, Dan Ebert has a very slight four-point advantage in the championship standings over Jake Tim. Uh, uh, Ebert, Jason Hughes, Jim Chisholm, and Jack Sarton have all been the uh, four race winners so far. Hughes actually went for a nasty tumble last Saturday night at Rocket Raceway Park. I was asked about this. Uh, he did climb out of the car okay. It did look ugly, but again, he is okay. Around the other uh, dirt racing shows this week, Sam Haverteep Jr. and Bud Kading are on Wing Nation. Hunt the Front's Joshua Joyner is on with the Dirt Reporters at Dirt on Dirt. Quick Time has Justin Peck. Dirt Tracks and Rib Racks is talking about dirt racing photography. Hoagie's Garage has Corey Elias and Doonwich on Dirt has Ross Bales and Dwayne Keith. Turn 2 Terribles has JJ Loss. Across the Groove has KJ Snow. Plum Wild uh, has Jordan Casey. And I've added a new show to the podcast page. You can check out the Caution Free Show where you get your podcasts or on YouTube. You can find all of these episodes and more over at dirttracker.com slash podcasts. All right, that's it for the daily show today. Make sure to stop by dirttracker.com for all the latest news plus the streaming schedule. Uh, and on the YouTube channel, we'll be releasing episode four of the Sprint Car Build with Zach Hampton tomorrow. So stay tuned for that one. You can catch up on that series anytime over at youtube.com slash dirttracker. Hope you guys have a great Wednesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.